Hey, my name is W.E.B. Du Bois. I'm a writer, historian, activist, and a very influential black figure. You might know me from a number of things. Perhaps you've heard of the NAACP, a black civil rights group that I helped found, along with one of my roommates, Ida B. Wells. Or maybe you've heard of the term I coined, the Talented Tenth, which describes the likelihood of one in ten black men becoming leaders of their race in the world. Perhaps you know about the Niagara Movement, which I helped found in response to the awful Atlanta Compromise proposed by Booker T. Washington, my other roommate. I'll get more into that when I give you a tour of my room. First, I'll show you the commons area of the dorm. My roommates, Ida B. Wells, Booker T. Washington, and I all attend Tuskegee University, which Busher, Booker T. Washington helped found. I'm double majoring in history and social sciences, as these were what I studied when I became the first African American to earn a PhD from Harvard University. Over here is Booker T. Washington's room, and I believe he is in there right now, actually. Over here is Ida B. Wells' room. And finally, this is the entrance to my room. Going in. If you look to the left of the room over here, you will see my wall of books that I've written. I wrote many books in my career, and I've put some of the most important ones on this wall. The one in the top left, The Souls of Black Folk was the most influential and important book I ever wrote. I wrote this when Jim Crow laws ran the South, and blacks were being segregated and severely oppressed. This book was written in opposition to Booker T. Washington's platform to conform to the laws and go about their own lives, which would only serve to keep the oppression going. Another important book that I wrote was The Philadelphia Negro, a Social Study, which was my first ever case study. Based on this, I concluded that the problems black people faced primarily stemmed from how they were perceived by white people, and that if white people would simply view African Americans as equals, a lot of our troubles would ease up. Next on my wall, I have a Soviet flag, which I was forced to put up after I was charged with being a Russian agent. This was during the time when McCarthyism was rampant, in the United States, which was when many people were being accused of being Russian spies without any sufficient evidence. Because of my Marxist views and my Russian sympathies, I fell victim to McCarthyism. This large flag over here is, or at least it represents, the Pan-African flag, as I believe all people of African descent have common interests and should work together to have a cultural nationalism. Over here, I have the diplomacies. These are my diplomacies hanging on the wall as I graduated from Fisk University, got a master's and a PhD from Harvard, and I studied at the University of Berlin. Down here is a ballot box, which I have because of my outspoken support for universal suffrage. When I was born in 1868, black people didn't even have the right to vote. Two years later, in 1970, the 15th Amendment to the Constitution was ratified, giving African Americans the right to vote. While this was a milestone achievement, it was not good enough, as many tactics were used to keep African Americans from voting, and women didn't even have the right to vote. In 1920, the 19th Amendment to the Constitution was ratified, giving women the right to vote, Yet another huge milestone for universal suffrage. Finally, just three years after I died, the Voting Rights Act of 1965 passed, which outlawed voter suppression tactics used to keep African Americans from voting. Although I didn't leave, live to see it, my dream of universal suffrage had finally been accomplished. I have this ballot box in my room to remind me of all of the work that I did to help that goal be achieved and to keep me grounded in the fact that it had finally been accomplished. Finally, in this corner, I have a few protest signs. 
I can get a good angle on them. <laughs> because I believe that change can only be accomplished through protest and resistance. The first sign, right here, says equal rights for blacks. Because my supporters and I believe that blacks should have immediate and totally equal rights as whites. The next sign, in the middle here, says we say no to the Atlanta Compromise, which was my Booker, my roommate, Booker T. Washington's idea that blacks should conform to segregation and Jim Crow laws, which I'm sure he'll tell you all about. While we both want equal rights for African Americans, we have entirely contrasting ideas on how to gain this equality. Well, Booker T. Washington wants to sit and wait for white people to finally come to their senses, my supporters and I want immediate action and are willing to do something to create that action, which would be resisting and protesting. The final sign, right here, says economic and educational equality for blacks. So I have this sign here because it was the main focus of the Niagara Movement, which was also, as I mentioned earlier, in retaliation to the Atlanta Compromise. We wanted immediate action of equality of education, and we wanted fair pricing so that we could compete in the economy. All three of these signs show my firm belief that I want, and my supporters want, immediate and total equality for African Americans. Well, that is the tour of my room. With, of course, some background on why I have what I have in my room. Now my roommate, Booker T. Washington, is going to give you a tour of his room. While the two of us may have been bitterly opposed on how to gain equality for blacks, we both fought for civil rights and we're both on the same side fighting for the same thing.